Hello friends, in the last talk uh, where we talked about the theoretical aspect of creativity, uh, we, are, we were anticipating coming to this part where we would be actually looking at some tools which can be used by you for creativity. However, before we go on to that, let us have a quick overview of uh, the areas that we are going to address as well as uh, the uh, a bit, little bit of refreshing of what we had done the last time. So, we will start by looking at some key points uh, which kind of emerged from our last discussion and a few additional points. We will be looking at some games and some activities which I will be sharing with you and if required uh, hand with handouts can also be provided and uh, a summary of the main points followed by the references. Some of the books that you can follow, you can look it up on the websites and certain uh, web pages where you can access some of the material. However, uh, as I have said with you, I will be sharing some material uh, along with this video lecture, which might help you with any kind of individual or group activity that you might have in mind. So, these are the points to remember. <coughs> the first thing you need to do is to dissociate the two kinds of thinking, the evaluative thinking from creative thinking, because uh, when you are doing any kind of analytical thinking, your focus is primarily on what uh, is the correct thing to do what is the logical sequence of events, does it make sense or not and things like that. But uh, when you are doing generative thinking, you are not bothered about these things, your essential focus is on creation, however illogical outland is ridiculous it might seem. So, that is something which we will have to keep in mind. Assumptions need to be questioned, every time we push the boundaries some existing assumptions are thrown out of the window. For instance, even if you are looking at uh, an area like science where reasoning dominates, the logocentric uh, world view which existed till the renaissance told us that uh, the earth is the center of the universe. So, obviously, there were certain assumptions which were working and which were very deep rooted, because if you are looking at things, things seem to be moving around us rather than we moving. Okay. And it was only when these assumptions were thrown away, that we started moving towards a sun centric concept of the universe. So, even if we are looking at sciences, we find such a situation arising. Pattern thinking, uh, patterns are important, exploring patterns is significant, that is fine, but pattern thinking is a thinking which is based on existing patterns and that can be inimical to creativity or creative ideas, because you are going to move along lines which have already been created by you. So, the possibility of exploring new lines may not exist. Creating of new perspective is something which you are encouraged to do, look at things from a different point of view. Let us say that some of the best photographs happen to be photographs which start looking at things in a new way. If you are looking at the tradition history of painting also, you find that some of the uh, new dimensions of painting, uh, which emerge significantly happen to be of that kind. For instance, if we look at uh, European tradition, which is known as uh, Impressionism, it happened to look at uh, the world in a new way. Earlier paintings were done in studios, Impressionism started looking at painting from life itself. So, you went outside and you painted what you saw at a specific point of time. So, you see that uh, this desire to grasp the reality as it is at that particular moment, to capture a moment in a photographic way, but as an impression uh, gave rise to a new movement altogether. So, you see that uh, in music also that kind of a thing has happened, uh, where you see that a particular kind of music has given way to a new kind of music. That is because the way you are looking at music has changed. So, new perspectives, negative thinking is essentially something which closes our mind. It sets off panic reactions, uh, it is something which uh, is good for doing routine work at times, 
but for creative thinking it closes the channels because you are in a hurry or there is a kind of a flight or fight response there is a tendency to search channels creative channels the brain kind of kind of sets himself and focuses on doing only the minimal activity because it is linked to the concept of survival when fear anxiety stress are associated when negative things are associated with that then what happens is that our thinking process is kind of uh, blocked negative thinking can have such causes but sometimes negative thinking can become an attitude and when it becomes an attitude the problem that you face is that uh, you start looking at the dark side of things and you start trying to find reasons why something should not be done so obviously the possibilities that we are talking about today and as well as, as well as in the earlier lectures stop appearing in front of us and then of course taking risks because anything new that you are going to do any exploration that you are doing any new method you are trying to impose or implement or whatever there is a certain amount of risk involved it might fail but then you will have to take that chance and in most cases if it is well thought out it generally succeeds so having said that uh, the kind of saying that uh, i had referred to i have already referred to this book by van gundy and uh, some of the tools that we are going to look at the at least the first two tools are from the same book by van gundy which is there in the references is <coughs> i might try to partially do these uh, experiments with you not experiments games with you but the best thing to do would be to actually try it out in on your own now you see that uh, if you remember in the last uh, session we talked about the fact that when you start exploring new channels when you start exploring new possibilities when you keep on doing a thing even when the solution has been achieved it is only then that there is the possibility of coming up with something very very new something which you have not looked at our general tendency and this is something which is again linked to our survival instinct is that the moment we find a solution we stop there human beings like all other animals have been geared hardwired for survival and when it comes to survival optimization is something which is a very very dominant strategy used that's why as discussed earlier heuristic thinking very often uh, is what you have rather than critical or analytical thinking even when that is possible for instance uh, you have a 200 ml uh, glass containing 200 ml of cold drinks and you have a 500 ml glass containing 200 ml of cold drinks the general tendency is to pick up the full small glass of cold drinks rather than going for the larger glass which is containing the same amount of cold drinks these can be strategies here we don't think there is a heuristic thinking we don't go for analytical thinking the brain optimizes its resources so because the brain optimizes its resources the moment solution is there the moment it seems that the problem is over we stop there we switch to other problems which are facing us one of this tendencies that we have to create is to keep on thinking of solutions in spite of the fact that we have already got a solution now many of the games that we are talking about right now are essentially about that sometimes it becomes difficult once you have got a solution the desire to come up with other solutions is lost that motivation is lost but when at the same time a lot of so possible solutions are generated and until you piece them together you don't know the solutions exist you keep on being able to generate more number of ideas now many of those ideas might be ridiculous outright funny absolutely unusable but it's also possible that one or two of them are very very relevant interesting and new and can be used in a meaningful way so if you're looking at uh, <coughs> the first one uh, which is known as semantic intuition uh, developed by uh, scored in 1978 and revised by van gundy you see that uh, what you can do is let's take the example of uh, an ice cream company which wants to create a new ice cream okay and let's call it cool congo you have given a name to it 
Now, let us say that we divide to create two categories and we initially do not try to connect them. So, the first one is about packaging and the second one is about people who might have this ice cream. So, about packaging you set generate a set of ideas. So, under packaging you might uh, think of a cool colors, you might think of uh, let us say uh, something which uh, looks like or resembles Congo. Okay. You can think of uh, playing around with the word Congo with maybe bongo or other musical instruments whatever and you can think of uh, packaging which is very very different okay, associated with maybe a ship where somebody is going to that place or an aeroplane a flight which is going in that direction something or the other. What you have done is that you have isolated packaging you are not thinking about the users. Now, let us look at the users. So, you might start thinking about user attributes, you might think of a user who is thirsty, you might think of a user who is hot, you might think of a user who would like to go to Congo, you might think of a user who is trendy because young interested in trying out new flavors. So, you might be interested in a dynamic or somebody who is an adventurous kind of a uh, let us say person. Now, what you have is that you have two sets of ideas and now if you start linking let us say cool colors with heat you might come up with an interesting idea or something which looks like Congo uh, you can explore it link it up with dynamic young uh, people who are drinking and you can come up with a new set of ideas. You can look at the Congo bongo thing and you can say okay fine maybe I can link it up with thirsty and uh, maybe another word which kind of jingles okay, frosty. So, th thrust, thirst and frost the kind of match and Congo and bongo they kind of match then maybe you can think of a musical instrument it can have something which creates the ambience of that place maybe a drum. Okay and uh, you might have let us say ice cream package which looks like a drum and you can have it inside and here maybe those legends can be there. So, you see that you are able to come up with suddenly new ideas which if you are not linked it, if you had isolated them right at the beginning, I, I, I am sorry if you are not isolated, if you had thought of them together you may not have come up with because these are discrete ideas and later on we will be looking at this uh, with free association where this is taken to it is extreme and this is a moderate form of that, but you see that uh, you can take up a problem, you can explore it and probably will come up with some very interesting solutions to your problem. So, this is one of the examples of a game that you can have. <coughs> you can also have a different kind of a game if you want uh, which is uh, to help participate develop as many creative ideas as possible. I like it, I like that. And basically again I will explain that it is like analogy. Okay. Now, what you have is uh, what you have over here is you are trying to create a analogy. You have another problem which uh, another technique which is known as forced analogy and I will talk about that a little later, but this is again a variant of that. Let us let us say that uh, your basic problems how to get more students interested in learning. So, your main problem is students must learn, but let us say that you say that students learning is very much like maybe a dog getting interested to play with you, uh, asking a child to learn a new game, asking an old person to learn to how to use computer and you can make a series of such possible points as is indicated here in the powerpoint. Okay. Now, let us say that you pick up either many of them or you can pick up even one of them. Let us say that we take up the one which is the most ridiculous, make a dog interested in playing with you. How do you make a dog interested in playing with you? Maybe you have some reward for it, the, the dog, maybe you, you have you go outside because the dog may not be interested to play, you can have a kind of a game that might uh, make the dog 
interested in playing with you. Uh, you might have a pathway where you are playing around or jumping or running or whatever you are doing. You can also have some restraints like uh, the dog on a chain or whatever it is. You can think of uh, reward I have we have talked about let us say the reward is a bone over here, but you can talk of other things also. So, at least let us say that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 I have come up with 5 ideas you can come up with many other ideas. Now, let us suddenly quickly link it to students learning at least apparently students learning can be rewarded in some way. Student learning can also take outside the classroom take place outside the classroom students learning can be fun you can have games students learning can follow specific pathways you can mark demarcate pathways and link it to how the learning process takes place. You can also have certain restraints on what they can do or not certain rules governing their entire process of learning. So, that the entire thing that you have talked about here the games and all that are restricted controlled restrained in a particular way. So, you find that uh, just by making a casual relationship between two different contexts uh, you you are able to relate something which happens in one context with something which happens in a different context draw a parallel and use analogies. Analogies are very powerful tools uh, for generating creative ideas and uh, I hope you will try this out as well. There are many other methods now there are some classic methods like trial and error where you keep on trying to do things again and again. So, that is that is always there, uh, but uh, that is something we have already discussed in the context of theorization that trial and error is you keep on trying something until uh, it succeeds at some point of time you master that technique, but that kind of learning generally takes place uh, let us say if you are learning archery or you are learning how to play tennis or you are lying to trying to be a better uh, cyclist. So, your skills gradually improve they do not uh, suddenly the ideas do not come up. So, that is a different kind of thing means and analysis that what do I want what is there uh, at the end what are what are the resources I have let me bring them together well those things are there analogies I have already discussed and schema is where you have a particular framework and you use that for now uh, I mean how you assimilate those things in the context of learning and divergent thinking schema can be inhibitory in the sense that if you, if you have an existing schema very often learning the moment you want to come up with new ideas you generally go back to your schema because there is a tendency of the brain trying to do less work because the brain is attempts generally to be as lazy as possible as I have just discussed with you. So, these are some of the points and some of the methods now we will come to a few other methods analogy is like this is like that in some sense a plane is like a bird they both fly they both have wings they can both travel for a long way without landing both can sense where they are going, but they are not similar in that they have different means of propulsion are made of different things. So, when you are making an analogy between two things very very different things if I say that uh, I would like to make an analogy between a pen and a human being uh, then it probably very difficult, but then after some time probably I can come up with some very distant kind of relationship. I can say that the pen has a certain period of life after which it stops writing human being also has life after which uh, it is the human being is dead pen has uh, a cover and an interior there is a outer side of the pen and there is something inside the pen human being body also has something outside and then something inside. So, you see that if you want to go for making creating analogies among very disparate things we keep on doing that in fact in poetry you see that analogies metaphors similes they are the they are the I would say the back backbone of creativity you make very startling uh, relationships creates very startling relationships build up very powerful analogies and then you find that wow that this is very beautiful because you are trying to create establish a relationship which nobody else had thought of let us say a poet thinks of this sky as a huge blanket uh, which is moth eaten. So, th through the moth eaten folds okay, you can see the stars now this is an analogy and it is so beautiful as a metaphor in fact one of the poets actually did that okay, Hume in one of his very short poems. So, analogies are very very powerful analogies can be used very creatively you can have biological analogies you can have uh, uh, analogies uh, for solving mechanical problems that is in fact, how if you are looking at Da Vinci's creations 
obviously, he took looked at uh, the flying machine that is birds in order to develop his ideas of flying machines. In fact, if you are looking at the entire uh, evolution of the flying machine and aeroplanes, at least in the early phase, the evolution, the development started by looking at uh, birds. So, from a biological metaphor, you start developing mechanical metaphor. Most of the things focus on that kind of a thing. So, here, here are some techniques uh, uh, that I have shared with you and this is available in the slides which I am sharing. So, let us not go into the details of it. I am just making you aware of the way that you can explore this. Okay. Here is another one I am sharing with you attribute listing. Uh, take an existing system or product break it down into small parts or subsets identify various ways of getting these parts can they be recombined to form a new product of systems. So, you identify a set of one can add event product one wishes to improve listed attributes a pen material what what are the what is what are the different kinds of material from which can be made, it can be made what are the different shapes it can have what can different targets what are the different colors it can have texture. So, again you are isolating the different components and if you are making a list you can come up with very interesting ideas. For instance, the moment you talk about shape, you can come up with all kinds of outlandish shapes and you might find that kids may enjoy having let us say pen which looks like Mickey Mouse or a pen which looks like uh, let us say Tom and Jerry. So, you can uh, you in fact, you have such pens in the market. So, shape is something which gives way to a lot of imagination and you are coming up with interesting ideas. Colors in the same way. the moment I talk about let us say fluorescent colors or glitter. Okay you come up with interesting ideas or translucent, transparent, sky colored or you see that you start talking about the colors of let us say fabrics, then texture colored paints and all kinds of new things come up. Same with textures, material you have been using series of different kinds of material you can come up with innovations for new kind of material let us say biodegradable material, material when the paint you throw away the paint after a few days the paint kind of decomposes. So, you it is recycling is not a problem green pen you can call it you can come up with a number of very interesting ideas which can sell in the market. Okay. So, brainstorming is something else which uh, I would slightly elaborate because uh, this is something with this is a technique uh, which I will just touch upon I will in the slides the details have been given what exactly are we talking about when we are talking about brainstorming. N if you remember right at the beginning we said that you need to differentiate analytical thinking from creative thinking. Uh, in the context of brain thing, uh, brainstorming, you are essentially doing divergent, illogical, irrational, uh, unreasoned thinking. You are doing what is known as free association. You are coming up with any idea under the sun which comes to your mind in relation to a word or a, any kind of thing. Now, if new new terms which have been introduced are known as brain writing, which is when you see that uh, brainstorming is a vocal activity in a class or in a group of people some people might be very shy and these shy people will not come up with their ideas they might have very interesting very very exciting ideas. So, brain writing is where anonymously you write down a series of ideas and drop it into a box and once the pool box is opened since there are no names nobody knows who, who the idea has come from the shy person also expresses herself and at the end you come up with start discussing these ideas. Okay. Now, brainstorming uh, this is one part of uh, brainstorming and then obviously, after brainstorming has been completed you try to piece the things together and identify what exactly is happening and you go for analytical thinking. So, that uh, you can converge and come up with a usable kind of a material at the end of it. So, suspension of uh, your belief uh, rationality and as I told you, you can look at the slides for getting how to do it. Free association is again something where in relation to a particular word as I had told you during the first task we did together any idea that you comes to comes to your mind you just making a list of that. So, if I have an idea how to make a class more interesting then I separate these words into uh, the basic components class I make it into more let us say I make it into interesting. So, I have three words and when I start free association anything that comes under the category of any word that comes to my mind when I talk about class I might class I might say category 
class I might say glass because it sounds close to that class I might say uh, classy class I might say students I can come up with many I isolate this and I talk about more more I can say less I can I talk about great temptation I can talk about any list of ideas interesting I can come up with many other ideas now what is basically happening over here is that these ideas are generated in isolation and then you start linking you you try to make connections ok you see that class C might have something to do at some point of time with class class also happens to have different categories of students so you see that you come up with new relationships new possibilities of linkages that you can use and uh, class can have less number of students classes can be great uh, classes uh, uh, more more is a temptation uh, there might be a temptation to leave classes so this way you can start linking the ideas and then come up with some if not one maybe five different solutions uh, which you have and some of them might seem idiotic but one or two might actually work and you are coming up you are generating new ideas because you are not following the main route the route which your uh, mind the schema your basic uh, orientation your logic and your learning throughout these many days have taught you these have taught you certain things so the moment you try to solve it these things will come to your mind ok it is a classroom I take classes in classes this is what generally happens so you start thinking along your experience what you have learnt and all that so you are walking along a beaten path you know this particular path but if you take side paths which have not been discovered where the links have not been met you might find that there are very interesting explorations to be made discoveries to be made ok so free association again I said that uh, they they can be elaborated the last thing I will be doing with you is quickly touch upon another kind of thinking which is pretty popular and successful in the last session when I talked to you about creativity in the context of theories I told that uh, there are many theories of uh, uh, about thinking and uh, you see that uh, De Bono has been critiqued criticized for some of his ideas in terms of uh, how useful they are in the context of uh, let us say academic thinking but in the context of creative thinking De Bono so ideas usually have been very successful have been used both in the industry and have been explored to a certain extent in the context of academia as well from the context of and the first from the perspective of soft skills I have a feeling that uh, this also although a little elaborate is something which can happen uh, which can be pretty meaningful and I am sure that uh, there would be many websites where these uh, techniques are elaborated and I hope they will convince you of the relevance of these techniques six thinking hats is about six different kinds of thinking which actually take place when we are thinking simultaneously or in sequence but where which are isolated here if I am thinking about a problem maybe all the thinking different kinds of thinking come together I say that what if, what if I do this then immediately I say that now this is a ridiculous idea let me not think about it now what is happening is that this particular ridiculous kind of thinking which could have succeeded at some point of time has been kind of curbed when vaccines were first introduced in uh, Europe you find that many people found it ridiculous that a diseased organism is being injected into a healthy body ok so it sounded absurd it sounded ridiculous outrageous but you see that the fact that it was the, the, the pioneer the inventor continued with that was what kind of gave rise to a total revolution in the field of uh, immunization so you see that uh, different kinds of thinking have their different spaces and the six thinking hats permits uh, you to think in these different spaces independently without fearing that the other kind of thinking will interpose so uh, let us say that uh, to begin with when you pose the problem or you come up with a problem you start by covering all the facts figures information needs, needs and gaps drop all arguments you are not looking at what will happen what is good what is bad anything of that kind you are just looking at the facts the class is not interesting you are not asking the question why is this class not interesting how to make it more interesting should I go for uh, 
a response from the students. No, you are not thinking about these things. What are the things about this class which are not interesting? Making a list of it without thinking any kind of. So, facts, facts and only facts. This is where you are, you are not uh, again thinking rationally. You are talking about your gut feeling, your impulse, how any outrageous impulsive uh, kind of thing uh, that comes to your mind. The kind of free associative thinking we had been talking about all this while is what you encourage. Judge, judgment, caution, logical. Okay. Now, this is where after you say that okay, this is the problem, one has to be very careful. Classrooms are very sensitive places, students have very sensitive minds, they can they can be uh, modified, I mean they can be manipulated, they can feel outraged, they, the injustice can be, can be done to them. Or, so, one has to be very careful, so you make a list of those qualities, but you are keeping it separately. Logic and positive. Okay. Now, you are doing some kind of thinking, okay, this will work, this will work. Even if it may not work, it is still logical, so hopefully that it will work. With a positive attitude, you are doing a little bit of logical thinking. You are doing creative alternatives, possibilities, wide range of possibilities, alternatives, change, provocation, critical argumentation, whatever it is, you are doing that, okay. but essentially creativity, that is what you are highlighting over here. And then this is the last kind of thinking, where the other five kinds of thinking are brought together. And at no point of time are you isolating or saying that okay, this individual said that, you are just looking at the, the thoughts, the different thoughts, different kinds of thought processes which have been involved, rather than looking at the thinkers who have done this thought, uh, under I mean uh, explored or thought in this particular way. The idea is to look at the ideas rather than the people who have generated the ideas, to delink uh, people from processes, people from problems. That way, a certain degree of detachment is something which you are able to develop and you might be able to solve the problem in a more interesting, more uh, meaningful way. So, here are some of the references, I will be sharing some more in the slides. And I have a feeling that uh, this to sum up of what we have done so far is that uh, we have looked at the basic concept of creativity, we have looked at theories of creativity, we have also looked at uh, some of the basic do's and don'ts and we have also tried out a few tools ourselves. We are now aware of five or six different tools and if you start googling, you will find that hundreds of tools, different tools are available. Now, it is important to find out which tool fits you, which is which tool you are comfortable with. It is also important to find out which tools you can use individually and which tools you can use in groups and then maybe try them out. I hope that uh, this will be very meaningful in many contexts uh, where you will be dealing with other people, you have to come up with new ideas as quickly as possible and I hope that some of these things if you did not know about them will help you meaningfully. If you knew about them then at least it reinforces your conviction that these tools work. Thank you very much.